Some say it started with the war on terror, others that the World Health Organization dropped the ball. Of course, no one denies the pervasiveness of the internet to be a factor. A few blamed God, and or the LGBT. Me, from what I've pieced together, it started when the buses stopped taking cash fares. After that, it was only a matter of time. Three soldiers lie in wait, Rod, Jane and Freddy, sharing a sudden roll up between them. So, you're saying it was bad manners which led to do for? Not in so many words, but yeah. Well, for that and, you know. I don't think he does, Sarge. <sighs> Distance to target. Still about 0.5 clicks out. The homosexuals, of course. The poofters. The words die with him, an arrow in the chest. A heartbeat later, before they can react, Freddy and Jane are likewise dispatched. First light creeps over the horizon. And so we meet Tuvia and Spencer, an unlikely duo travelling south down the canal on trusty and arrow boat Just Ducky. Their journey plans to take them from the very outskirts of London, through the northern suburbs and into Limehouse Basin. A treacherous passing in the post-apocalyptic city, one with many dangers. They aim there, at Limehouse, to lock out onto the Thames and turn west, leaving the dangers of London behind with the promise of Bristol instead. Spencer is the more senior in years and attitude the hostile environment making him severe before his time. He leads the endeavour, transporting Toby, his infirm, bedridden father, to their destination. In contrast, Tuvi plays the hapless, cheery fool. Despite some challenges, the next few days go as well as perhaps can be expected. En route, Tuvi acquires a firearm with mismatched ammunition. He takes to fiddling with it as the cruise, a potential upgrade from his trusty bow and arrow. Tim soon seems tantalisingly within the grasp, until they hit upon three mills. Here, a railway bridge is down. Their way ahead, impassable. Reluctantly, Spencer calculates an alternate route, and they set off back upstream, turning onto the Hartford Union, now committed in a detour which takes them through the very heart of London itself. They find their first obstacle quickly. The middle pound dries a bone. Tuvi rushes ahead up the towpath on his unicycle to flush some water through. Quite aware this would be the perfect spot for an ambush. He senses something watching. In an instant he turns, whizzing back towards Just Ducky. Crack! His head slams hard into a low clearance bridge. Only darkness follows. Regaining consciousness, Tuvi finds himself in a comfortable makeshift bed, apparently in a renovated train carriage. Transpires his watcher, Alex Jr, was a scouting member of a small clan currently claiming the nearby ruins of Hackneywick Station as their home. Just as Spencer, Tuvi and Toby live their boat-based existence, these characters survive upon the railways. They turn out a friendly, if unconventional, family and offer up their hospitality. Spencer himself makes for something of an asset at the camp and enjoys the new company. Tuvi, however, is initially confused by the group and uncomfortable there. Apart from his head injury, he has a lingering distrust of the son and no understanding of how the relationship of the married lesbian couple, Rosie and Jessica, works. Around the campfire one night, Matriarch Alex tells a tale of when she was a toddler, pre-apocalypse, circa 2014. On special weekends, she'd visit the Camden markets on a big white beam boat. She recounts the area as it was fondly, the nearby rail network, the pirate castle, the three big locks. How though? 2083, a dangerous choke point. This is, quite simply, the only route left that Spencer is to continue towards his goal of Bristol. Before long, Spencer's itchy feet, Tuvi's full recuperation, and increased signs of nearby soldier activity bring it all to a head. Time to move on. That night, Spencer has a Camden log nightmare, a soldier ambush. He does not sleep well. Julie, morning comes, just ducky setting off. 
they make their way through Victoria Park onto the Regent's Canal. At the mouth of the Eslington Tunnel, they halt for the night. Distracted momentarily in his planning, working away on a makeshift calendar, Spencer fails to realise their schedule now lands them attempting the passing on a Sunday. Camden. Just as he arrives at the first light, Spencer pilots are up to the initial lock, unexpectedly chained and padlocked shut. Hoping against hope that this surely is the final hurdle to get them on their way again, Spencer and Tuvi make a snap decision to cut their way through. Spencer gets out the power tools, hooks them up to the boat's engine, and starts to drill, saw, grind the padlocks away. The noise reverberates and echoes, out the lock, around the pounds, between the buildings. They work frantically, fearful of detection. Then, almost without warning, it's over. The chains fall away, the gates swing open, the boat pulls forward, clearing the locks. Spencer and Tuvi can barely believe it. They've made it. They high five awkwardly. A shot rings out. Spencer falling to the deck. Up in the pirate castle battlements, a church sniper fires again. Alarm bells begin to peal throughout the entirety of Camden. Tuvi bundles the injured Spencer downstairs to the relative safety inside. He looks back to the deck where the gas cylinder lies, unprotected. Very likely the next casualty. Then it truly would all be over. Another shot. Indeed, the canister is hit. And that's about it. It ejects its contents forcefully, but without explosion. Because that's what happens when you shoot a propane canister. Tuvi grabs his firearm, diving out into the cloud of gas to take a blind shot towards their assailant, and blows a few of his own fingers off. Amateurly rechambering 9mm rounds to fit a 38 calibre revolver is dumb as a bag of hammers. As if by a Hail Mary, Rosie appears, making short work of the sniper. Tuvi takes the controls, powering just duck away at top speed. But all is not well. Spencer quietly expires. London now lies behind. Alone, Tuvi continues his journey, the landscape starting to change again. Greenery, open fields. About a week out, Tuvi stops. He stands atop a hill, windless in hand, surveying the land ahead. Cane Hill flight. Balls, he mutters. Then wanders down to begin setting the sequence of 16 locks required in order to pass. Bristol. Clifton Bridge is sighted. Finally, Just Ducky has arrived. At the Portishead Beach, Tuvi sits, the sun setting. Tuvi is now perhaps a man. Perhaps he's found a piece of source, albeit in solid. The credits roll to black. A helicopter spotlight blinds a prone Tuvi. Sand whips at his face and body, his blankets blow away, the noise, the wind. So, perhaps not. 